how much does it really cost to go on a ski holiday at Europe's most expensive ski resort? This place isn't your average ski holiday. Think Michelin star restaurants. A hideaway for the rich and the royals. And champagne flowing like water. Today we're going to break down exactly how much it costs to visit Zermatt in Switzerland. Travel, accommodation, skiing, spending money, and of course, Apres Ski. But first, why are we doing this? We believe small budgets can stretch many miles. So we decided to set ourselves a challenge. Can you visit the world's most expensive ski resort on a budget? We like to make things hard for ourselves, so we're doing it super last minute and booking it on the day. We will share everything we spend and also let you into a couple of secrets about how we plan to do this affordably. So let's see, can you visit expensive places on a budget? One of the hardest things about going on a ski holiday is you've got to pack really bulky clothes into small suitcases. I actually think I've done a pretty good job. I've been up in the loft, got my ski goggles, and I've managed to get all of my stuff into a cabin bag and a rucksack. I think it's about time we ordered an Uber to the airport and get going. Let's go. Switzerland, here we come. <coughs> Jammed. <coughs> also, in here, we have a secret weapon. A secret weapon that helps you save money on holiday. We will reveal all later. We are at Manchester Airport and we are sat at the gate waiting to board our flight. We're actually flying today with Ethiopian Airlines, which is a first for us. We didn't actually know that they flew out of Manchester, but they do. They fly from Manchester to Geneva, and then from Geneva, that same plane carries on all the way to the capital of Ethiopia. One thing that is essential and a way to save money when you're going on a ski holiday is you need to wear as much ski gear as possible on the flight to save on bag space. So we're going to Zermatt in Switzerland, and what Zermatt is famous for is the really famous Matterhorn. So whilst at the airport, we had to get a Toblerone, but the logo of a Toblerone is actually the Matterhorn. This is a souvenir before we've even got to see the Matterhorn in person. Had to be done. Time to get on the flight. We have got two tickets into Geneva. These cost three CHF each, which I think means they're around two pounds. This gets us from Geneva Airport into Geneva Central Station. We're on a train now from Geneva Airport to the center of Geneva. That is where we've booked a hotel for one night because tomorrow we'll be getting on another train further into the mountains. Good morning from Switzerland. It is day two of our trip. Last night we stayed in this hotel, which was a three minute walk away from Geneva train station. It only cost 88 pound for the night. So far on the trip, we've spent this much. We're about to go and get some food in Switzerland. We come out of our hotel here, and that is Geneva train station, right on our doorstep. And our train is in 20 minutes, but we need to get breakfast. Okay, because we ate on the plane yesterday, we didn't actually get any food last night. We just went to the hotel and slept. But we did have one other expense last night, and that was a plug adapter for Switzerland. So we've already had to outlay 19 pounds on one plug adapter. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had any phones or laptops this morning. So that was an essential item. So we got breakfast this morning from a supermarket in the train station. And we got quite a few things, some fruit, some pastries, some yogurts, seven pound 50. The trains are massive. They're double decker here in Switzerland. Hopefully we're getting on one of these. And uh, yeah, let's get to Zermatt. So yeah, I've had to pay £235 for my Zermatt ski pass for three days of skiing. It is done on a basis of however many people are on the slopes, it costs more. So it rewards you for booking in advance and punishes you for booking the day before on the train to the ski resort. So we're off the first train now, we're just waiting for the second train. We've been to the co-op to get coffees. These cost about £2.20 each. We're nearly there. This train has actually been quite nice. Jade was impressed by the Swiss train so far, but little did we know it was about to get a whole lot better. The second train took us deep into the mountains, giving us the best train views we'd ever seen. These last minute trains weren't cheap at 110 pounds per person. We hadn't even arrived and our total was at 768 pounds. Despite spending most of the train ride looking out the window, Ryan did manage to book skis to hire, but more on that later. Okay, so we have just arrived in Zermatt. And the first thing that we've noticed is that there is this enormous mountain overlooking the whole resort. 
and it is of course the famous Matterhorn that you'll see on Toblerones. There she is, but there are some worrying signs. We are not even a minute out of the train station and we have found this. And that is just one of so many watch shops. We have spotted our first Michelin star restaurant. This is one of five here in Zermatt. I don't think we're going to be... My lips are cold. I don't think we're going to be eating there this week. Okay, this is a bit more of us. We're going to be okay here. So there are our first impressions of Zermatt. But before we get on to talk about exactly how much you need for spends here, let's show you our accommodation. Welcome to our crib. It is a three minute walk away from the center of the town and it's a one bedroom flat that comes with a kitchen as well. So it is perfect for holidays like this because you can save money by eating in and not going out. Do you want to come and see it? Let's go. We are downstairs. So this is where we are staying for our time here in Zermatt. We booked this so last minute. We actually booked it on the train to the resort. There was limited availability, but I feel like we have looked out with this. We've got a one bed flat, double bed, and then a kitchen over here so that we can make meals. Oh, hi there. So yeah, here you have it. Look at this view. It's insane. I can't even describe how amazing it is to wake up to that every morning. It costs 146 pound per night, split between two. That's about 73 pound each for a night. I quite like it here. Another good thing about staying in a little apartment sort of chalet vibe is that you get your own coffee machine. So let me make myself a coffee. We are staying in Chalet Estjahorn, Estjahorn, something like that. To, to show how much of a good deal this actually is, we were having a look on booking.com at some of the other hotels that are available in Zermatt. Some of them even have their own private ski slopes. There is a hotel and it's the most expensive one here and it is called Mont Crevin Palace. It's on the high street and you walk past it and it looks like an amazing grand old building that's been here for ages. And it's really famous and it costs, if you want to get a standard room there on booking.com, it costs about 750 pounds just for the one night. With that said, I'm looking out of my window now and I'm staring at the mountains and I just want to go skiing. So I think it's about time to go and hire some skis. I've already got my lift passed. Let's go and do some skiing. But obviously first. Do you remember the skis that I booked to rent whilst I was on the train? Well, I'm gonna go and pick those up now. So earlier today, I booked them. I paid 99 pounds for the three days and I can pick them up today so they're ready for skiing tomorrow. So let's go and get the skis. Right, quick one from me. You don't pay to go on the slopes. You pay to have access to all the lifts and gondolas in a ski resort. For three days, to have access to the Matterhorn Paradise ski lifts, I paid 245 Swiss francs, which is about 230 pounds. It is quite expensive and I didn't buy the option to go over to the Italian side, which is actually one of the biggest benefits of being able to ski here, is that you can go over to the Italian side and you can also ski on Swiss slopes as well. A couple more thoughts about skiing in Zermatt. So if you're a beginner skier, I don't think it's a great place because there's probably two, three, maybe four, blue slopes there are no green slopes and to get down back into the town of Zermatt you have to do red runs there's loads of gondolas where you have to take your skis off to get on them I think that is a bit of a faff when you're you know trying to do skiing and then you have to take your skis off to get a gondola I'm much more a fan of chairlifts like the one that I'm on now that being said, the skiing here is amazing. Like the views are insane. All of the slopes are basically in the shadow of the Matterhorn. It's such an iconic mountain and it just makes the scenery look absolutely insane. That's enough about skiing. I'm gonna get off this ski lift, ski back down to Zermatt and I'll see you in the town center. Now let's talk about spending money. Obviously, some things here are really expensive, but there are things that you can do on a budget. There is a viewpoint in Zermatt which gives an amazing view over the town and the Matterhorn. It's completely free. You can also pay 21 euros to do a return journey on the funicular train. You head up to 7,500 meters and the views are amazing. There's also the Matterhorn Museum and that costs around 15 euros a ticket. You could also check out one of the spas. They range from 20 to 30 euros for a one-off session. We're talking heated swimming pools, steam rooms, sauna. 
but how much do you need for actual spending money? Like how much do normal things cost here in Zermatt? So I've got a Matterhorn magnet, which is about three pound 90, three pound 80. That's going on the fridge when we get home. We are at the hotel bar in Sean Neg. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. We've ordered the cocktail. It's 14 pound each. This is where we're gonna get our chocolate from. They charge it by 100 grams, so this, cost 10 pounds for 110 grams of chocolate. Hello, can I just get 150 grams please? Got ourselves some roasted chestnuts to warm the cockles on this cold Swiss Friday evening. I am quite surprised that there is a kebab shop here. 13 pound 45. That's expensive for a kebab. Mm. It's coming to the end of the day now, so it should be quite busy down here because this is like the end of the ski run. When the, when the sun drops behind the mountain, it does get really cold. The kebab has been finished, by the way. This is what I was coming to find. So come over here. At this end of the resort, there are all these like benches that you can just chill out on, have a relax. But come over here, this is the special thing. Why are these binoculars here, Jade? So you can look at the Matterhorn. So you can see the Matterhorn up there. The Matterhorn is actually smoking for some reason. Presumably that's the snow getting like blown off the top of it. What an amazing view of one of the most iconic mountains in Europe and it is just absolutely enormous. It's so cool. You could just sit on this bench, chill out. Yeah, so there's that bench. There's also this bench. More of like a relaxer, sun lounge kind of vibe. Not bad for a free activity. Another little bonus free activity for you. If you follow this up here, it's a free like walking trail to some other like alpine bars, which is quite cool. So little free alpine walk. Also great if you're not skiing. So that brings us to the end of our time here in Zermatt. We've been here for three days. In total, we've spent this much. I don't think that's that bad. I'm surprised. What do you think? Where should we go next? 